Hello, my name is Jenna Yu from Songnam, South Korea. I am currently a senior attending Seoul International School, and today I'll be presenting a conference talk on my research project on the correlation between the depiction of women in advertisements slash monetary media and the progression of gender equality. My project was a comparative case study of the United States and South Korea. So before I move on to present, my project here is a brief table of contents showing what I'm going to discuss today. So the background, why did I choose to research this topic? Well, living in South Korea, a traditionally patriarchal society, women's rights was always a topic that I naturally was interested in exploring. However, my school unfortunately did not teach any courses related to studies in gender, so when I came across Polygens, I thought it would be a wonderful opportunity to explore my interests more in depth. Therefore, I decided to combine television media, a medium that's crucial in our contemporary society today, and my passion for gender equality to create this project. Moving on to the research question and thesis. What was the focus for my project? The title of my project is called A Comparative History of the Representation of Gender in U.S. and South Korean Television Commercials. Like such, my project mainly focuses on finding the correlation between progression of advertisements and gender equality. Ultimately, I set my focus on finding whether the depiction of women in the media could truly be considered as progressive in reaching gender equality. Hence, the guiding experimental question that my mentor and I came up with for this research was, can a commercial really be more progressive than its time, or is it merely not as regressive in comparison? In response to the experimental question, I formulated the following thesis. While a commercial can appear to be progressive for its time, they cannot be truly progressive in achieving gender equality due to the nature of the media that is bound to change for trends and its vulnerability towards the desire to offer instantaneous gratification for the public's eye in a short period of time. To add a little further explanation, my thesis is stating that society must change in order for the depiction or representation of women to change in the widespread media and that it does not work the other way around. Moving on to the process, how did I come to create my project? To create this project, I first and foremost needed to gather advertisements from the 1930s all the way to the 2020s. For the earlier decades, I did this by going on credible websites such as the Korean newspaper Dongalbo, JSTOR, or other online databases that contained these earlier decades' advertisements. For the later decades, meaning post-development of digital media, I simply went on YouTube to find videos to gather clips representative of the time period. After collecting all of the resources on a Google document, I then moved on to writing an analysis or a commentary of each advertisement. While writing each commentary, I also conducted supplementary research on the critical women's rights movements or theories that happened during the decade and incorporated those into my analysis. Several of my commentaries consider how the significant theories during the time may have influenced the representation of women in media during the same decade. Following is a screenshot of the document that my mentor and I worked on. After writing the commentaries, my mentor and I would go over to edit the written portion of the project. Finally, these commentaries would be copied and pasted and embedded into my website. Speaking of moving commentaries onto the website, I will now move on to showcase the product of my research. So what did I create in the end? The final product is indeed a website that compiles all the commentaries and advertisements onto a single platform. It is called Women in Media. I initially wanted to present my findings in a research paper. However, after coming across an interactive website created by the United Nations called Women's Footprint in History, I was inspired to present my work in a more accessible and interactive form. I also decided to create a website because I found that it would be more suitable for the ultimate goal of my project, which is to inform the public and global communities about women's rights. So the conclusion, what are the final takeaways and how is my thesis justified? 
Before explaining the command of evidence, here is an extension to my thesis. I am stating that media is simply an extension of the majority's opinion that is easily alterable by the trends or beliefs in society, thus an advertisement targeted to please and persuade viewers to purchase a certain product cannot and is not powerful enough to alter the public's opinion on gender equality. While researching and creating this project, I came to realize that for the television media industry, women were just another source for monetary gain. These two JSTOR sources do an excellent job in revealing some evidence regarding this vulnerability of advertisements. The first source reveals that while advertisements do have an effect on societal values, products are bound to change depending on the societal values developed at the time. While the second source mentions the repetition slash break plot structure that is employed widely in advertisements. Furthermore, it reveals that this repetition break plot structure that advertisers use, they only seek to increase consumer engagement with brands by putting out commercials that are bound to please the majority. Advertisements that depicted women as strong, independent, and powerful individuals were strongly correlated with the developments in gender equality during the time, such as the theories or movements that I found in the supplementary research. For example, the creation of the National Organization for Women in the late 1960s, or more specifically June 30th, 1966, generated a society that supported gender rights. Thus, the advertisement for the incredible bubbles in the 1970s of the U.S. appeared to be more gender equal and more gender represent representative of both genders than the previous decade. Commercials simply follow this pattern of following a popular ideal to appeal to a greater audience to popularize their products. I also found through analysis that there was quite a periodic or cyclic trend of progression and regression throughout the 90 year long period. An advertisement would appear to be progressive in one decade, then the consecutive decades advertisement would appear to be regressive. For example, the advertisement of 1930 was regressive, while in the 40s it was progressive, then it returned to being regressive in the 50s, and this trend is seen throughout the century. In the long term, the commercial from the 1930s is definitely less gender equal and more regressive than the commercials that we are exposed to today in the 2020s, which implies that baby steps towards achieving a more gender equal society was definitely taken, but that basing it off of this 100 year long period, television media has not been greatly helpful in achieving the ultimate goal of equal representation of both genders. A secondary takeaway from this project would be the difference in progression of gender rights in distinct societies. While women's rights movements developed more readily under the liberal circumstances of the U.S., South Korea suffered a significantly longer period of stagnation and struggle in fighting for women's rights per its deeply rooted Confucianist values, patriarchal culture, and conservative values. This disparity in culture was yet another factor that I found that slowed down the progression of gender equality. I found this to be personally very fascinating and I found this to be a potential project that I could create later on in the future. With that, I will wrap up my conference talk. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation and here I embedded a link to my website if anyone is interested in reaching out or viewing it. Thank you.